We are still waiting for camera? Okay. So, welcome everybody. I'm Tomek. And uh, I don't like long introduction. For those who, knows me, who know me, you know me. If for those who doesn't know me, you don't care for now. So today, I would like to talk about Flutter, which nowadays is a pretty hot topic. And no wonder, like it's a really nice piece of technology. There are plenty of blog posts and presentations to make us developers excited about Flutter. Already you saw presentation from uh, Miriam, Brian, and Dylan, and there will be even one more from Matthias. Uh, okay, so a question to you, like who here have tried out Flutter? Okay, and who has uh, been using Flutter in production? Okay, like in total three people. That's an, that is an issue, because no matter how an amazing uh, technology is, unless it's used in production, it won't survive. So today, I would like to talk about how I convinced uh, Groupon, my company, to try out Flutter. And by doing so, I will try to give you guidelines how you do, can do the same for your company. But first thing first, this is presentation without code. So uh, if there are any known uh, programmers here, you should be pretty happy about that. And this is because there are already plenty of materials that, to make you excited about Flutter. And this presentation is about having strong arguments and being able to use them. So this is about having discussion with your team, a dialogue to, uh, to convince, uh, so you can convince your team to Flutter. And by you, I mean somebody who is passionate about Flutter and would like to use it on a daily basis. Okay. So, but before I continue and give you like, my uh, guidelines how you can convince different team members to Flutter, probably it would be prudent for me to tell you what was the story behind uh, Flutter at Groupon why we have chosen to pick uh, it as our solution to increase the productivity. So first, the, uh, Groupon has two applications, mobile application. First is the customer application, which is the one that you might have been using. This is a really big application, so, uh, and it allows you to book uh, a table at restaurant, do manicure, and something like this. And as I said, this is a pretty big application. And the team behind it is also uh, pretty large. The second application uh, Groupon has is the merchant application. This application is used by the business owners. When, so when they set up a deal, they can track how it goes. And because merchant, there are less merchants than customers, also, uh, uh, the merchant application is smaller, and the team behind merchant application is uh, smaller. But being small is not always a bad thing. With a big team, if you want to try something, you need to have everybody on board. And this can take time. And small teams, agile teams, can rapidly uh, test something, validate if it works. If it works, the teams can keep it. If it doesn't, they can uh, scrap it. So, for example, a merchant application has been using uh, Kotlin for about two years, and we are super happy about this. Whereas the merchant, uh, the customer application, people are, uh, are now considering to use uh, Kotlin in their uh, uh, source code. Furthermore, in the last couple of months, merchant applications have introduced architectural components, Firebase, we dockerized our build system, we moved to a new build system, and also, we have been trying out Flutter. But being small is not always good. In the beginning of this year, I was presented 2020 vision for the merchant application. Vision uh, presentation should be inspiring. Uh, they should think out of the box. And this, uh, pr this application that I saw during this presentation was amazing. Uh, I thought that every merchant uh, would love to have it. But there was a problem. It was a bit too amazing. With our, our team velocity and current speed, doing this application within two years wasn't really possible. And like, merchants deserve to have also really great experience. 
So something had to be done. So one solution might be to use cross-platform. So my question here, so which cross-platform is the most obvious choice nowadays? Of course, it's React Native, because it's like used uh, for a long time. People are happy with it. Like, really big amount of companies have been using it for a long time, and they are happy, of course. There are some that are moving to native, uh, native implementation because of their reasons. But, and even the uh, customer team has investigated Flutter to check, not, not, not Flutter, React Native to check if it's feasible. But there was an issue. That there was a legal issue. According to the license, if you uh, would have any case in court against uh, Facebook, you would instantly uh, lose the right to use uh, React Native. So it was no go for Groupon to try it out. But thankfully, there is also an another cross-platform framework, which is even more awesome, according to me. I have been using this uh, no, Flutter for a couple of months beforehand on my personal projects, and I really like them. So why not uh, try it, and why not try to convince my team to use it? So the process of convincing was going really well, until one party. During that party, I met my ex-colleague, Maciek, who is really passionate about React.js and React Native. And at some point, we went to the topic of cross-platforms. And he, he told me that the React Native have changed in its license, and it's OK to use it. And I asked him, OK, I would definitely know something about it. When did it happen? And he said, uh, yesterday. Yeah, that was a problem. The main reason why we didn't use React Native was because of the licensing problem. And with this gone, React Native is back on the table. So it brought a bit of turmoil into my plan. But thankfully, I wasn't convincing my team to use Flutter because it's a replacement for React Nati Native. But I really thought that it's better than React Native and it would work better. So thankfully, after three months of con convincing, uh, I got green light to start using Pl Flutter in my project. But Flutter isn't a silver bullet. It's, it's not all fit solution. There are some cases when you shouldn't be using Flutter. In the morning, you uh, heard about a couple of them from Miriam, and I have also two of them. For example, if you have a web uh, team uh, only available, you don't have any mobile developers, but they already know React.js. Uh, to learn React Native when you already know React.js is super fast, and also you would be able to deliver a quite OK application in really rapid uh, speed. So when, uh, when you don't have mobile developers available, you might consider using React Native. Another uh, thing is when you are targeting a small market in, in like countries where the bandwidth of network is no, not so high, and you want to keep the application as small as possible, or even an instant application. With Flutter, at least currently, it's not possible, because the minimum size of Flutter application is about 6 megabytes. And that's way too much for an instant app. But if those are not the cases for you, and you would still like to try out Flutter, you can start convincing people to use it. But do it slowly. Don't rush it. Gently poke them and suggest it. And there are different ways to convince different people at your team. First, I would talk about designers, because in my opinion, they are easiest to convince. Uh, one uh, argument could be that there will be less arguing between us developers and the designers. 
because how many times we got some mocks from the designers, we went happily to implement them, we thought that, okay, everything looks exactly the same as in the mocks, and then show them to the designers. So basically I'm blind, I cannot see the difference between good UI and bad UI. So the designers would say, no, 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 this button is too big, font is too small, put some margin, go away. And I would need to reiterate it multiple times. And uh, this Pixel pushing is pretty annoying when doing in native, develop, uh, uh, native platforms. With Flutter, with its uh, hot reload, you just do pair programming with the uh, designer. You grab your computer, put it next to it, next to uh, uh, him or her, and uh, do it within a few minutes. Miriam mentioned that uh, in, your project, in her project, uh, the designers were working on the same code, but I wouldn't go so far. I, I'm not touching their designs, they're not touching my code, so let's divide this. Another argument would be show them the gallery app, and especially this uh, animation example. Because when I showed it, uh, this example to my uh, designer, I, I got a quick response. Wow. Okay. Uh, uh, okay, that was annoying, let's keep it like here. The second part is, this can be a really good reference case what the, you can use in uh, Flutter applications and what designers can design in the mocks. Because if you are doing a, a material design application or Cupertino components, it's really fast to just use whatever is in the gallery app. But if you want to have a bit more customized uh, looking views, th this is also easy because Flutter was made for customization. And with all those changes, you can create a beautiful design. You can add AMP factor to your application. You can make it sexy. And not only by using uh, static designs, adding animation is also super fast and super nice. And animation add another layer to the user experience. So that's why uh, the designers really like animations. So currently, what would happen if, for example, a design would come to you and say, OK, we have like a really small task for you. Here is this animation of this weather application. Uh, it's really simple, some animations, some particle effects of the rain, so some blurring effects. How hard can it be? Can you implement this? In the past, I would say, I think this is fine. I would be able to implement it because everything that you uh, can implement with Flutter, of course, you can do with native. The only difference is the time. Uh, I usually really like to do business logic uh, instead of UI because I can uh, write first test, then write code, so do nice TDD, have it in a separate module, so it compiles fast, so I can do this iteration really quickly. But with uh, animations, it's not so easy, and UI. You usually need to do the entire rebuild of the application. So for how many of you, instant run worked really well? Anybody? Instant, no? No. no. Oh, yeah, one, good. So this, this was in the past. Nowadays, when I would see uh, this kind of designs, I, I would say, meh, yeah, sure, we can do it, no problem. Uh, nowadays, you shouldn't be scared uh, what the designers are giving to you. Nowadays, I encourage them to like, think of something as crazy as possible, but nice, nice crazy, and leave uh, the details of implementation to me. Okay, so those are pretty good arguments for the designers. Next, we can go to QA to, for testers. And contrary to like, popular belief, testers don't like finding bugs because this is not their work. The ma main task is to help the rest of the team deliver as good quality application as possible. So helping uh, them and supporting them with this is really important. And there will be less testing because the, uh, there is common uh, shared code base. I will give you an example. So uh, when we are releasing Android application first and then iOS, first we, the, the testers were testing the Android version. Of course, they found uh, bugs here and there. We fixed it and shipped it. And then they went to testing the iOS uh, application. Uh, 
And surprise, surprise, they didn't find any like flutter bugs in the application because they already tested it on Android. But you need to be careful about this. In my uh, you know, experience, developing in Flutter is faster than in native. So you will be able to deliver more features, more stuff quicker. And this means that QA will need to like, test more stuff as well. But while you are having some free time when you are doing Flutter, just automate stuff, like do, uh, use the testing tools that Flutter has, and it has really good testing tools. So focus on automation. So uh, th this is about the uh, QA. Let's go further. Like, and things are getting a bit more hard. Uh, we developers uh, love having discussion, and especially in topics that uh, it's our main area of expertise. If we have too many discussions, this can change into arguments. And there's also a saying that arguing with a developer is like wrestling with a pig. After some time of wrestling, you notice that the pig likes it. So, <laughs> so you want to limit uh, this arguing uh, as much as possible by giving like, good arguments why they should switch to Flutter. So one of the things that I did, well, I prepared a workshop to show them how nice is it to develop in Flutter. And uh, this is really important because in recent years, uh, the developing on native got really nice with Kotlin and Swift. So that's why it's even more important to show that Flutter is even nicer experience. So my suggestion would be show them how to do hot reload. And furthermore, like I don't know if you know, because hot reload does not only work on your code. It works on entire framework on Flutter. If you are browsing through Flutter uh, source code and you don't know what this method do, the, the straight coming from Flutter, just change it, hot reload, bam, you will see instant changes. And it's really nice to learn Flutter. But for this session, don't only invite uh, mobile developers. Invite also uh, uh, dev, you know, backend developers and web developers. And w while you're at it, you can invite QA and DevOps, because this is a really good time to answer all the questions that they have about Flutter. And you want to do it because you want as many people excited about Flutter as possible. Another fun thing about like, Groupon, after this session, after uh, you know, we started doing Flutter, one uh, uh, backend developer joined our team, and he stopped doing uh, backend development, and he is the second best Flutter developer in our team. So it's uh, super nice. So we developers not only care about how fun uh, stuff can be done, we also care if the stuff that the product has thought about is doable in this current platform, uh, in this current framework. That's why create a showcase application that uses the most crucial APIs that you are using currently in your application. For example, in Groupon, we like use, like uh, Groupon is about vouchers, so we had to have some scanning, uh, uh, QR code scanning. Also, uh, the push notifications are really important, like for every application, next, I wanted to try if uh, creating a nice architecture, in this case, with Redux. I hope Brian was talking about Redux today. And the last thing, I wanted to show that the performance of Flutter is really nice with infinite lists. But when you are doing it, don't go overboard. Because at some point, I started to re-implement entire application. And uh, like in a couple of months, probably it would be possible, but no. Like, Keep it as uh, short as possible. Just implement the key features of your application. And this show uh, showcase application is important because of the two uh, cases. First, you can show it to everybody, like product, QA, developers, to show that this thing, those things are possible. Second of all, if you start doing Flutter, it will be a really nice reference case for other developers to learn how to do Flutter. But at this point, uh, you won't be able to show 
all the extent of the power for Flutter. You will be new to Flutter like I was. So you need a support to be able to show how amazing Flutter can be. And if you haven't you know, seen this channel, also Miriam mentioned it, the, in the Flutter channel, the guy, the, the, uh, Matt, is implementing amazing design within uh, about two hours. And this is mind-blowing. Uh, For example, the uh, weather application that you uh, seen uh, on the previous slides was one of his creation. So it, it's pretty nice. And he created it within two hours. Okay, so those are nice arguments for developers. And uh, my uh, developers said, okay, we can try it out. Okay, but you know what, what comes now. Now the things are getting really hard. It's always hard to convince managers to any technical thing. And rightfully so. Because uh, managers are responsible in front of stakeholders for delivery, delivering a really nice application. And at this point, you have to have rock-solid arguments to do so. Because if some high-level manager says no to Flutter, that probably will mean no. One of the uh, key arguments, which is probably obvious for us, is there will be team merge. Not only you will be merging developers, because they will be working on the common code base, you will be merging testers, because uh, you would don't need to have so many dedicated uh, per platform. You will be uh, merging designers, because hopefully you will try to make a beautiful, customized uh, designs, rather than only Android and only iOS. And also, managers won't need to think too much about feature parity, because feature parity is built in. If I, another fun fact, after I implemented one uh, feature in, uh, no, in Flutter, like on Android, and showed it to one of my manager, uh, he asked, OK, so this also is implemented on iOS? And I respond, uh, yes, that's the case with cross-platform solution. And I had to repeat it multiple times to multiple people. So this is ap apparently not so obvious. But really, you will need help to convince managers. And because nobody is a prophet in their own village. So you are not the expert in Flutter. So you will need to ask other people. So, and the Flutter community is really amazing. Uh, for, example, uh, uh, for example, in my case, I reached out to Eugenio Mar Mar Marletti and Seth Ladd, and they really helped me to convince uh, my managers to Flutter. And uh, thanks to them, like, uh, we are doing Flutter. And we need uh, help from our community because of the reference cases, or closely lack of them. Uh, there are already applications, big applications in Flutter, like Alibaba or Google AdWords. But the number of them is still growing, but it's not as amazing as we would like to have. And managers love uh, showcases. They want to know how many big uh, uh, application makers are having Flutter. But there is one showcase that you shouldn't be mentioning to managers, at least not yet. Don't mention about Fusia. Fusia is Google's new operating system that they're working on. And it's internally using Flutter. So if Fusia is released, that's really amazing for all the Flutter developers because they are ready to create amazing applications the day Fusia is announced. But the problem with big uh, uh, operating system is it's really hard to create them. And furthermore, what is even harder, to get a adoption from the users. We've seen multiple, multiple of mobile uh, platforms that died out because there were no users. And the lastly, the most important thing that I think that managers c care about is damage mitigation. They want to have an abort button. Whenever uh, some developers want to start uh, to rewriting entire application from scratch in any technology, manager says no, because uh, if this thing won't work, there will be like months of months of developer work wasted. So that's why we need to think about the best way to 
in the, like lose as little time as possible if Flutter fails. So don't try to start rewriting your entire application in Flutter if you already have one. Try to integrate Flutter into your current application and deliver one small feature. Test it if it works, and then you can continue, like adding more features. And at some point, you can refactor this one piece of your uh, code, this one feature that is such a spaghetti code, and uh, remake it with Flutter. So it's way better, because this approach covers the manager's back. So I'm almost finishing, so I have a few sug suggestions for you. First, be passionate about uh, Flutter, because passion is called contagious. Being crazy about stuff is not. Another thing, you might be thinking, OK, Flutter is a pretty cool thing, but uh, I'm not capable of convincing my team to it. There, there is probably somebody else uh, in my team to do it. But you are sitting here. You already saw other talks about Flutter. You know more or less how, how to uh, do uh, simple things in Flutter. I, it might be possible that you are the most knowledgeable person about Flutter in your company. So if you want uh, probably convince your team to Flutter, you won't be using Flutter. And last thing, you might be afraid because you don't know if Flutter will succeed. And that's true, because predicting f future is really hard. Uh, because uh, predicting future is really hard, uh, because so many things already have failed. So help us, help, help uh, Flutter developers, uh, start using Flutter, uh, start advocating for Flutter, and don't predict future. Let's make it. So with this done, so thank you. If you have any questions or about like convincing or about Flutter, I'm super happy to answer those. So thank you. Oh yeah. Uh, yeah. It's OK, go ahead. Yeah, you have two microphones over there, and we have 15 minutes for questions. So probably a very obvious question. Um, you mentioned at the beginning uh, some animations, some fancy animations. Uh, I have uh, a certain level of doubt that you could do like all the native animations at the same speed and at the same uh, I don't know. Uh, so Performance. Mm -hmm. uh, plus, there are, um, how, how can I call them, um, certain components mm -hmm. uh, as well that, say, for instance, they're specific to, to operating systems, like uh, Apple Music, say, for instance, that bubbles animation thing, that is only on their platforms. And uh, so, so, again, so, like so the question is about mm -hmm. uh, how can you have uh, platform specific uh, components? Do you have to write like custom um, per platform code or? So like, uh, for example, one custom co uh, component would be like for Android, there is this discovery feature. Like, you know, this pulsing uh, things. It's not, not built in into Flutter. But for example, this guy like wrote it within like 30, like, I don't know, 45 minutes. So uh, uh, there will be like uh, uh, libraries to uh, deliver you those custom animation, but they are also really easy to write. So like really, animation creation nowadays, it's not the same thing as we are used to for Android or iOS. So did it answer your question? So it, it's, it's yeah. usually you will need to write anything specific, but uh, doing so, it's super fast. Okay. Thank you. Hi, Tom. Great talk. Thank you. Interested to know how you convinced your iOS colleagues. So was it more difficult to convince your iOS colleagues than your Android colleagues, or were they more open-minded than my iOS colleagues? So like, by, de by definition, like, Android are easier to convince because this is Google's thing, so it was easier. Yeah. But uh, iOS wasn't so hard. Like, I, like, showing them how I program on daily basis, uh, how amazing the hot reload is that I don't need to test on different devices. Because, um, for example, 
uh, feature parity. Uh, when I uh, started implementing on uh, 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 Android, uh, my, after one month, I was like, okay, maybe I should check out how it looks on uh, iOS because, like you know, like React Native, uh, definitely you have to test on both platforms. I test, uh, I run it on the simulator on uh, iOS. Everything was working just fine. So. It, to show them how nice it's work, uh, is it work, no, working with Flutter is, because it's really nice. So I, uh, other than that, it wasn't so hard. Maybe we need to swap colleagues. Uh, Thank maybe. you. <laughs> Welcome. Hello. So you were talking about in integrating uh, Flutter parts of the application to the existing application. So I was wondering, uh, did you do that in your application, how hard it was, or it was possible at all? Uh, so yeah, I did it. Uh, uh, if you, uh, you can, uh, if you are starting a, a brand new application uh, with other, there are no tra no traction. Everything will be go smoothly. With uh, integrating, it's a bit more massaging. You need to like massage a bit your you know, Gradle builds. I need to do use uh, because currently uh, uh, before we have three uh, no two repositories: iOS repository and Android repository. And Flutter uh, project looks like this: it has Android folder iOS folder and lib folder which has the Dart code. So I had to somehow put those two repositories under those folder. So now we are using submodule, git submodules to do it. And it, it took me with an investigation total amount of time about four days to include Flutter into our uh, no, Android version uh, include Flutter into our Android version. On iOS, it took longer because, like everybody knows, that they have, they struggle. They have struggles with their build system. And poor guys. Yeah. Thank you. Thank okay. you very much. Any other questions? Uh, you say you've implemented uh, features in your uh, current app. Uh, how how many are you still growing that, or uh, how do you decide if you move if you say okay? We're going to use this. We're going to go full force, or uh, are you going to keep mm -hmm. it so, hybrid? So actually, uh, Android was released for last Thursday, and iOS was re released yesterday. So we need to now, like I think today, w w when I am away, they will need to switch Firebase flag. So the uh, merchant will uh, limited number of merchants will uh, see that, and then we will see how it goes. If it goes well, we have already uh, like ideas to start replacing parts of our application with uh, Flutter. But we are, we are going piece by piece. And at, if, this, if something explodes now, we are able to like, revert back and we won't lose so much time. OK. okay. Any other? OK, yes. Uh, sorry? Uh, the, no, again, this is a merchant application. Unless you are a merchant, uh, and how many group on merchants here? <laughs> if, if you are, like, uh, uh, you, you will see, only US, uh, because this feature is only available for US merchant. So, and for, like, after the talk, I can show you how it looks like, but on a staging environment, but uh, normal users won't yet uh, see it. Okay. Any other questions? Uh, so I tried to use Flutter and I had problems with uh, hot reload. So basically when I do changes in the Flutter code, um, it works fine. But then when I do changes in the Android native code, so I use it both at the same time, then the hot reload doesn't work correctly. And I need to stop and rerun the app to see mm -hmm. the changes. Is so, there any solution mm -hmm. or you know So something? like uh, native code doesn't change. Like if you are changing uh, anything in iOS code, uh, like Swift or Kotlin uh, Android, there is no magic. It won't deploy uh, automatically. Only Flutter code will be deployed. So you need to rebuild it and run again. So, so, it's, di so it's difficult to work at the same time with Flutter and native? No, no, no. It's, uh, if you are doing something in native, you need to deploy it in a normal way. If you are using uh, Flutter, you will have instant hot reloads. Yeah, but uh, my idea is that when I work on native, I have the instant run, if it works correctly, of course. And uh, I don't need to do the stop to run the app and to deploy the new changes. Oh, so I don't know. How, so if you are using instant run, I haven't used like for a while already uh, I, instant okay. run. 
So like still, uh, if you are doing native, you will need, you won't have a hot reload. Like on, only, in, okay. but we can uh, uh, talk later. Maybe I don't understand uh, like exactly okay. your case. Thank you. Okay. And anything else? Okay, so uh, I'm available. You can always uh, harass me. So just, uh, I will be around. So please uh, try out Flutter and enjoy the rest of the conference. Thank you.